Welcome to the great state of Arkansas and our next installment as we install Zwart Systems glider benches. In this video we're going to show you how to install the glider bench system. It's a new system, it maximizes space in the room, it's going to take away the aisles or the gapping between benches and we're going to get a smooth operation. So we've set up nine tables, 51 feet, four feet wide. It's some 1,800 square feet of benching that we're doing in this installment. We can roll them over, we can expose that pathway, and through the course of this video, you're going to see how it all comes together. And Zwart Systems, as always, is there to support every sale that we've done. We can install your benches for you, we can have a team come out, or you can watch this video and do it yourself. So in your package you would receive a number of drawings and these drawings are done by Zwart Systems to ensure that your benches go together correctly. There are certain things that you need to pay attention to and so there are several drawings that are coming. This is an overall view drawing and this is showing a leg assembly, what the bench is going to look like, what the track and everything, how it's going to splice and where the holes are and what the corner ends look like when you put in the corner brackets. You'll also receive a drawing like this. And this is where a number of the crossbars need to be. Uh, when you are going to put the liners on later, these cross supports will have to be in the right place. So these cross supports are very important to be in place. Uh, after that, we're going to go on one foot spacing and fill in the gaps. Then we have our final drawing. This is where you're going to get most of your information. This is going to show you your leg uh, spacing, your middle gap if there's a splice. So each end, you want to pay attention to where the end starts. So it's six in this drawing, it's six and three quarters from the end of the two by two to the first leg. And the same on the other side. It's going to tell you about where your bench side profiles are going to be, where your lateral supports, how a stand goes together, the splices and the tubing, the hat profile. So this is a very important drawing to keep in mind. Uh, you should receive it with every drawing order. And one thing I forgot to mention that I want to point out here, there is a, a di diagram here, entry, entry with no sump. So when you get your liners, your gray PVC liners, uh, this is how that's going to lay out and that's why that's important right now. You're going to have an end tray that's going to be on the one extreme end and then an end tray that has no sump. And by the sump we're meaning by the shallow well that is preformed into that liner. That liner, uh, one side will not have it and the other side will. So of course you want to put that sump on the side where you're going to be draining your tables from or, or adding your water to. Then there's middle trays, and they're all the same, uh, male, female, same length, and they just get spaced out. And then you'll get a division tray. And that division tray will be one tray that's an odd, it's a male on both ends, and that's going to go in the middle as the two ends meet. So we want to just keep in mind when we're looking at this drawing, that's why that's important, and it's going to focus on where the trays are going to land. So today we are installing the glider bench wheels. In your uh, shipment you would have received some 2x2 two two square tubing pre-gal that's been laser cut. You'll receive flat wheels and you'll receive grooved wheels, heavy washers, nylon lock nuts and bolts. And so the first thing that we want to do is get these assemblies going. This is something that you can have someone do. Uh, as piecework um, when there's something uh, available. So we want to get the nut in, want to get a washer on, want to place a wheel on, get the other washer ready, push through, and then secure with a nylon nut. Of course, the same for the grooved wheel as well. I'm just going to secure these up. I'm going to take an opening wrench and a socket. Get that all the way tight. 
So now we're going to put the wheel assembly together. And from the factory, you would have received a 1x2 pre galve cut to the proper length. And we're going to slide that in through the laser cut holes. Just nicely through both sides. We'll take the other one and do the same. Of course, making sure that both wheels are pointing down. And also making sure that we're doing two grooved wheels and not mismatching with a grooved and a, and a smooth. We want to put these out to the outside. And what you want to do is just get them flush. Once flush, you'll take your inch and a half by quarter self drillers, and from one side, you're going to pin it in place. And now your assembly is set, and you can see how this is just flush and peeking out on both sides. And that's all we need to do, and our leg assembly is finished. So, now we have to get the threaded rods ready. So on the top of your square post is going to go a flat with a hole in the middle square. And that's going to be off-center when it sets on. And then we need a threaded rod, and that's going to set our height adjustment. In this project, we have a very long table and we're doing drip drain to waste. So we want to get some slope on it. We like to see about two inches per 50 feet, but uh, it can be a little bit more aggressive than that if you like. Uh, just remember how long your bench is and how far you're gonna go. In this bench, we've decided to go quarter inch. So we're gonna get our threaded rod ready. Um, what I've done is I'm gonna put my first bolt on and we have to account for the two inch post bar and we still want to get a nut on top of it. So what I've done is I've set a mark here for two and a quarter inches. At two and a quarter inches, that's the height I need my rod to be so that the two by two will slide over and I can secure it with a nut on top when I get that far. Now what's nice is that the nuts are quarter inch done a little bit of math here and found that we want to do a quarter inch drop per leg and that's going to give us our total slope for this bench. So what I've done is I've put another mark on, I've set my first two and a half inch, or two and a quarter inch here and now what I'm going to do is just mark each nut to make a mark for each one. And now, as I prepare my next ones, I have a gauge. This is my number one, that's my number two, this is my number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten marks for the whole bench. I'm going to use this little guide because I'm going to be building nine benches, and so I want to have a guide that I can refer to each time. Now that I do my threaded nut, I'm going to check this out and I've got to put my next one a quarter inch and a quarter inch and a quarter inch. I would advise, if you are doing slope drain to waste, um, in this case our drain is going to be on the back end. So what we're going to do is we're going to start very tight. So we have our first nut on and now we have our second we're just going to put them back to back and that's going to be the beginning. And so we need two of those for the end. And then as we space out, we'll get a quarter inch gap, quarter inch gap, quarter inch gap as we spread out and make it to the front of the table so that we get our slope end to end. And that's what we're going to be doing now. All right, so we've set all the nuts. And so you're going to notice at the tops so all have the same spacing because that's for our two inch square tubing and our quarter inch nut on top. But as you see, the bottom nuts are now adjusted, a quarter inch down, stepping on each one. So we have 10 sets here, because we have 10 legs. We're going to put the lowest adjustment on the back, the highest adjustment on the front. And don't worry too much, because you can still do a final adjustment after it's been built. You can still get an open end wrench and just kind of tweak it if need be. 
But as long as you're close, it's going to save a lot of time and hassle later on. So in the last frame you saw, we were putting the bench legs together, the wheels and the crossbar. So with those assemblies together, the next thing to do is to set a couple of them on the floor and to thread the one by one that's going to connect them all together. Here we need to refer to the drawing. The drawing here is laid out. In this project, it's talking about 66 and a half inch spacing on the legs. Now your project may be different. It may come in at a different dimension, but for this project, we're going to use a 66 and a half that says on the drawing. We've taken four uh, one by ones here. We've clamped them together so that we have a nice straight square edge. And what we're really looking for here is to get them all marked out before we thread them through the stands. Um, when we look at our 66 and a half inches, we have to remember that our first leg is two inches thick. So I'm going to make my first measurement at 68 and a half to account for that. I'm going to stretch it out, 68 and a half, and I'm going to make a, a line. I'm going to come back with a square and make a proper square line all the way across. And now I'm going to go to my 66 and a half, which is right there. And I'm going to get on my line and make my marks as I travel down the bench. Now, once I've marked them all and I start sleeving on the legs, I'll be sleeving the leading edge or the face of the leg up against my mark. And so if I do that each time, then I'll have a nice... So now we're going to thread that one by one through the legs. This one you're going to need a friend to help you. It can be a little frustrating, but if you take your time, you can get through it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Rob from behind the camera. He's going to come and give me a hand. And we're going to get the first leg on from this side, secure it in place with our tech screw. Our, um, what were they about? Three eighths. Three eighths tech screw, so handy to have around. He's a three eighths and a three eighths driver. And uh, we're going to get the first one secured on the mark that we just made. So now we're going to start fastening the, uh, the sand to the one by one. We're going to use our, what is this Rob? Three eighths. Our three eighths by inch and a half. So you've got two tech screws that came with the project. You want the inch and a half for this task. And we're going to be packing the legs in place. We're going to, when we mark it, we're going to put the leg on the face of our mark. We're going to go to the pre drilled hole and set in a screw. This table is a little long and it requires an extra piece in the middle. And so if ever you need to put a piece in, it will be in the middle of the table. 
when we're, we have a one by one, it's cut exactly the length, and we provide an inch and a quarter splices to sleeve over top of. Those splices will just sleeve nicely, like so. And then we're going to take our one inch long tech screws. We're going to fire a couple eggs. Now unfortunately, sometimes you can burn out the tech screw. Maybe you're hitting the weld or something, but no worries. Make sure that we're still secure before we do the other side. One last check. Now proceed to put in another two. There should be four on the top of each. I'll do the other side and then we'll go from there. So now we're going to put our square plates on top of our post to prepare for our threaded rod. So, you know, we each have ten, we've got ten legs, one on each side. It's going to go on an angle and it's going to seat into the laser cut grooves. So just go along and set them all in. They may pop out a little bit later, that's not a real big deal. You can just maneuver them back in later, but as long as they're all in place, then we know when we're starting to do the next step, that it's ready. Now if you look at the drawing, the drawing is going to indicate where the first leg is down the 2x2. Two two. So we've measured this earlier, and we're like 10 and a half inches on the one side, but 6 and a half on the other. In this case, it's a 6 and a half that we want at the front. So, I just got to spin two of these around. I'm going to set them on the legs, just inside. And I'm going to take the other two and set them on the legs, just on the inside. And then we'll get the threaded uh, rods in place before we set them on the stands. Alright, so our 2x2 two two has been laying on the stands. And we've put in our threaded rod to the right height, locked on the top. And this is kind of a two-man job. So we've got Rob here who's going to help me, we're just going to set the 2 by 2 up on top. So starting on his end, he's going to go all the way in, and I'm just going to help him guide as he gets closer to the end. And so we're going to do it to the other three yet, and then we have the splices to put in on the 2 by 2 and then we'll be done. So now it's time to set in our two inch splices. So, we provided two inch angle iron uh, scalp. It has uh, holes pre-drilled into it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these up. We're gonna clamp around. We're gonna put two screws on the side. And these are our one inch long Screws, tech screws. And then we're going to set in our splice. So, what we're going to do is this one I'm just going to fasten tight. Snug up up against this side, set it with a screw. And then we're going to have Rob just put his knee up against that side. I'll put my foot behind this wheel and he'll push in and get them snug. A little bit of movement and flex on the table at this point. It's okay. This will square it up. You'll see that this is fairly wobbly at this point. But don't worry, as we continue to build the bench, as you see behind me, it'll just get firmer and firmer with each step. So, it's okay that it's a little bit loose. I'm going to set the rest of these screws in. We want to get two in each rail on the side and then two in each rail on the bottom. 
all the way around. So we're back on the job site this morning and we're trying to get some of the piece work done. So we have a couple guys helping us today and they're doing the roller assemblies that we talked about earlier. They're going to do some threaded rods, get those set up for us. But we want to keep them busy so we're going to get them to do some side profile um, end board assemblies. So this is a four foot bench that we're putting together today. So you're going to get a side profile aluminum um, and they're going to be pre-cut to length and they're going to be just shy of 48 inches and we're going to put the corners on and once the corners are on it's going to make us to the 48 inch OD measurement that we're looking at. So you're going to get a box of corners and they're just going to slip in to the ends. It should fit fairly snug. And then you just want to set it up like that. Grab your drill with the small self drillers provided. And just And now we have a finished end board assembly and you'll notice that now with the corners on we're 48 inches completely wide. One of the things that we want to use and, and remember is that we're using magnetic tips. So when you're doing a project like this with the tech screws that we have, using a magnetic tip will come in way handier than buying the cheaper ones that don't have magnetics. So, we cheated a little bit because we like to take the shortcuts that make sense and so we took one. We built the first bench and we built it without the track on the floor. That allowed us to get the table together, it'll roll on the concrete, it doesn't need the track to roll. The track is only a guide so the table moves around a fair bit while you're putting it together and uh, that just allowed us to get the first bench together and then decide where the bench was going to sit as one piece and then decide where the track was going to go. Now, the track come in eight foot pieces. They're pre-drilled for where the nail ends need to go and we're just going to measure that off the wall. Now in this facility, uh, of course, it makes sense. Uh, the lights are on top, the benches need to be directly under the lights. So it only made sense that the benches be pulled forward enough that they line up with the lights. Turned out that was 56 and 3 quarter inches off the wall. We're going to square up the first one. We just slid it right underneath the wheels once we had the bench in place. Squared that up, squared it to the wall, and then we're going to tap con them in. Now, what we use is a, a hammer drill. So when you're going through concrete, you want to use a hammer drill in the hammer setting. That's going to allow you to go through the concrete much easier and of course a masonry bit is always necessary. And then we provided you nail-ins with your project, more than likely. And so, I don't know Rob if you can see that, but what you're going to do is drill in with your bit and set this all the way in. You may have to tap the edges of the heavier round part to get it seated. Once seated, then take a hammer and pound the nail in. That'll spread the base and that'll lock the track in place and then we're done. So eight foot sections of track. All we need to do is uh, get that first track in place, keep our measurement true, and then just track after track after track, lay it down. In this installation we're doing nine tables. It's a bedroom, a uh, fairly large bench. So we can do those tracks and then once we get to the end, We'll just measure off, cut the track to the appropriate length, and fit it for the last track. All right, now we're going to put on some side profile. We've been uh, working away here uh, nicely along this pitch project, and we have all our cross members. We call them hat profiles. Uh, the cross members are, are spaced properly, and we did it kind of easy. Again, cheating just a little bit. We rolled the bench over to the bench to it. We've already measured all these, so we just went across from them, kept them straight. The important ones are on the drawing, the ones that have to be in a certain location. But the rest, if they're six inches or, or eight inches out, left or right, that your gaps aren't evenly a foot, 
that's not a big problem. The liners will actually take up to 18 inches of space before they, uh, before they need to be supported. We went on one foot centers, so there are some gaps in these benches that are about uh, 12 inches, 14 inches in some cases. Uh, 12 we wanted, 14 we lived with, and, uh, and there we go. The side profile is a snap-in deal. So the cross members are lanced, laser cut, and the uh, rubber mallet is your best friend on this one, because uh, it's going to hurt any other way. Uh, we're just going to line up the side profile, and then we're just going to smack it on. We started, we got our short piece, we put that on the end, long piece, and now we're going to put on our next long piece. So on any bench longer than 24 feet, you're going to see or need a splice to add the extra side profile. And that comes in the shape of a small U-channel. That U-channel, aluminum U-channel, is going to get hit in with a rubber mallet. And then four tech screws are going to come up from the bottom to secure it in place. Now a little tip. If you get these side profile and they're not exactly true, you can just loosen off these two cross supports and maneuver them a little bit so that they get right true. Set your splice in and then re-tech down the stands and you'll get a nice clean finish. Earlier we took the uh, end boards and we had you pre-assemble the corners on them so that those end boards were ready for installation. Here we've installed them. So all we did is we took that end board with the corners and we slid it onto the end profile and we set it in place with those two small screws on each side. That got it where it needed to be. We're just going to say a little note here. When we were putting on the side profile, we started on the edge of the 2x2. Two two. We lined it up and we went down. By the time we get the end board on, it nicely bumps out so that we don't see that 2x2 two two showing through on the other side. So we get a nice clean finish, we get a nice square end, and of course we have that nice plastic protective corner. It's going to save your pants. So I just wanted to point out the sword system track that the glider benches roll on. There's an aluminum profile that comes in 8 foot lengths. You're going to snap that down to the floor using a uh, laser guide and chalk string will get you straight. And we want to make sure that that happens. So get that down. It's pre-drilled so you can get a masonry bit, put in the tap cons like we talked about a little earlier. Uh, and then you're going to put your grooved wheel, of course, on that track and the rest of the wheels will be smooth wheels. Now, just a point, when you get the whole bench together and you have one wheel that is maybe just up on the track, you can pull this screw out, adjust it and put the screw back in. And if you're too close to the hole, there's a hole provided on the back side for you then to then pin it on the back side. But it is possible that you could put the whole thing together and you could be off by a quarter inch here just because of the way that it slants or the length uh, if you have a splice. So if you didn't get it perfect, no need to worry. You can just back this off, push it in or out as needed, put it back in and now you're square on the track again and you're done. And so as you look along the table, you'll see that we have flat rollers all the way along until we get a grooved roller at the end again. And so that's how the system works. The flat rollers on the concrete, the grooved rollers on the track. Good morning. We're, uh, we're here talking about how we're going to do the cross supports. And so we've been putting them in. And earlier we talked about the drawing that you received that are the first supports. These supports are going to go on uh, and they line up with the liners that are going to be on the table later. So these are the supports that are important to be in the right place. Uh, you just have to look for this drawing in your package and get them laid out. When we put on the rest of the cross members, 
we're going on 12 inch spacing, but you're going to see in some cases, like here, it's a little closer together, uh, just because of the way that the ones that need to be in the right place are. So when you have that, you can kind of space out a little bit, you know, make them uh, instead of 12 inch spacing, a couple 8 inch spacing to make that work out. Or in some cases, you may be along a 14 inch spacing. That's not a bad thing. Uh, the key is that we get the right amount of cross members per table. Now it's time to glue the liners. So we've put the liners on all the tables and uh, there's truly an end without a sump. The end with the sump is on the end. We talked about that a little bit earlier. We have our transition. So what you get is a male-female togetherness. So the end sump will end in a female end. A male will lap joint on and so forth until you have two female ends looking at each other and then you'll get the transition piece, the one that's custom cut, that'll fit in that gap. So now we're going to talk about how to glue the liners. So the glue is, uh, it smells like model glue. If you've ever modeled, uh, doing models when you're a young, young person, uh, that glue is going to have the same smell. It's provided and the tip is separate. So what you're going to have to do is cut off the top thread on the tip and then cut the tip and you're going to want to cut the tip on an angle try and get like a quarter inch three eighths type of a, a hole out of it and, uh, and then you'll be ready you're going to grab a standard caulking gun and uh, I advise getting a box if you cut the lip off the box and you have a bit of a sharp edge it'll just help you kind of get rid of some excess material that you're going to get so what you want to do is take your caulking gun. I have one already prepared and you just want to start on the other edge. This is kind of nice with two people because then you can hand the gun over to him for what you can't reach. But I'm going to stretch out a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a bead just on top. There's a common misconception that because it is a male female end that you would glue the female end and then lap joint. And that's not the idea. The idea is to put them together and provide a gap similar to the grooves that are beside it. So it's kind of runny, so if you have a box you can just let it set. So we made a gap similar to the size of these grooves. Um, a little bit left or right isn't the end of the world, rather a little bigger than a little smaller. Um, and if we just lay it on, that's a solvent type glue that's just going to start sealing in. Now I'm going to take a putty knife and I'm just going to clean on the edge of my sharp box. And we are going to just smooth it out. Rake it along. And as you get excess glue, just wipe it off on your box and keep going through. Now, the key here is that you don't want any pinholes. It's the little pinholes or air gaps that are going to cause the leaking later. Now, there's two ways. You want to be sure to come back and back butter those edges. Clean them up if you have any left over. And if you get that all done nice, then you'll be left with a nice seam when you're finished. And if you do miss a spot here and there, again this room is 1800 square feet, so um, chances are out of all the seams we're not going to get them all right. Uh, there might be a pin layer there. You can always come back, get another caulking gun, and then just top off on the top of it, put a little bit more solvent, it'll fill in that little pinhole and that should ease any leaking you should have. I'm going to finish off this joint, we're almost done the project.